Hey guys, welcome back to the series. This is day five or building a web app in 30 days. In this video, we are going to cover how to convert from the wireframes that we built to a entity relationship diagram. I will show you the process and how to pick the tables that we need, the fields that we need, and how to convert it into an ERD. If you haven't seen the series on the previous four videos, we built a blueprint of a web application that we are going to build. Day one was about the conception of the idea. What's the process to start mapping that out into a prototype? Day two, three, and four were all about building the wireframes and the screen flow, the series of screens that will exist, and then the prototype. So we are going to grab those wireframes as an input in this specific day to map out all the data tables that we need to back up the software. You can see this as a step where you get a specification and you start with the main task of figuring out how we are going to store this data, what are the relationships between it, and eventually how we're going to expose this through an API or GraphQL. So let's go back to the wireframes. Okay, here are the wireframes that we built. We have sign in, sign up, the homepage dashboard, a workout, edit a workout, new workout, had an exercise. The goal is to define what data we need to store. Let's keep it simple. We are going to start making some notes here. We have users, sign in, sign up. We will be using Firebase authentication in this case. So we are going to have a user ID, use ID, okay? Uh, we decided to do email login. The flow will be you write your email, we use Firebase authentication, we receive an email link, you click on that, you go back to the web app and you are in. So we just need the user ID on our database and that's all, Firebase out. Let's use that one. Then we will have to do dashboard, all right. So we have a home, we have workouts, and how do we store these workouts? So workouts, we will have a workout ID, user ID, and then we need title or name, a description, and the list of exercises. Title, description, and a list of exercises. But this will be a relationship. I will go through that in a moment so I can explain that. We have exercises and this will be a exercise ID URL mm, title description and we also have the Moscow groups. This will be an array of strings. I don't think we need anything else. How do we do a relationship between workout and exercises? We are building this in a relational database. We will have to create that table. Every, everything here is a table. I will explain this later, but we will have to have a table like work out as exercises. And in this, we will need the exercise ID and the workout ID. Workout belongs to a user. Then we can map exercises to workout IDs here and then we have a list of exercises so let's see if we have anything else we need to store in the database oh we do repetitions and rest time those will be stored in the relationship here i will put repetition count and rest time for every workout and exercise relationship, we need to establish a repetition count and the rest time. Okay, that's the data that we need. The muscle groups, rest time, repetitions, exercise, title, description, image. We have a workout. We have a description of the workout. We have a title of the workout. And we have a list of workouts per user. That's pretty much everything we need. How do we represent a relational database? There's a standard notation for tables. This model called entity relationship that we are going to use to document our database structure. 
This is part of the process of building the documentation or the blueprints. We are not coding yet. We are just trying to set up everything before we actually invest any time on building the software. I will use these shapes here, pretty simple. This means key, field, and type. We could do the most one. Let's figure out if we want to store something additional to our users, but we will have this type will be actually a string or bar char. I think we can do bar char 50. I will try to explain this a little bit. If you don't know what that is, this will be the primary key. And let's store the name of the user. Let's do full name. And again, we could do bar char 256, something like this. We we'll go to this document, then we have workouts and we have exercises. Let's start with this. I will just copy this. So I have it like this. So I don't need to switch tabs that often. The next table will be workouts. Let me do this lowercase. We will have primary key, ID again. We could use UUID. I'm using ID here because Fibers Authentication uses a string. I think it's like a 30 character string, something like that. So we need to store it as a string. And in this case, we will control the type of the data that we're going to store. We are going to use UUID. And then that's the workout ID, actually. Workout ID. Then we have user ID. This is a foreign key. And this should match the type of the user ID. Okay. Then we have title. We have description, title, bar char. For description, let's do text, which is like unlimited size. Then let's do exercises. We will have the exercise ID, UUID2. We will have the image URL. This could be 256 characters length field. Then we have title, description, and muscle groups. Let's do an extra one here. Muscles. And then this will be a bar char array. I think it's, this is the right expression for arrays. Let's see. All right, so now, as you can see here, we have relationships like this one, ID, relationship with user ID and then I will do this workout has exercises in between we can do something like workout underscore exercises and then here we will have two foreign keys which will compose together the primary key of this table it will be workout ID and it will be exercise ID and then on this one we're going to store repetition count Let's keep it repetitions and let's do a small int, small int and rest time, small int. Now we have a relationship between this and this and we have a relationship between this, this. Okay, let me explain this. We will have a users table where we are going to store the ID of the user, which will be coming from Firebase Authentication. We are going to store the full name just uh, to have something later on the settings. Then we have the workouts table, which is related to the user. We can have many workouts per user. So as long as the ID is different, we can have many of them. We have the exercises table where we can create our initial list of exercises with an ID, a unique ID, the image URL, the title of the exercise, the description of the exercise, and the list of muscles that that exercise targets. When you create a workout, you want to add many exercises to that workout. This kind of relationship, it's called a many-to-many -many relationship. I don't want to get deep into the technical side, but basically it's a relationship where you can store the workout ID, the exercise ID, and as long as this 
don't repeat, we should be good. These two will compose our primary key. And then on that relationship between the workout and the exercise, we want to additionally store the amount of repetitions and the rest time after the workout. I will try to explain real quick the types. Here is a bar chart, which means it's a array of characters of 50 maximum. The space allocated for this field will be 50 characters, which is plenty of space for the Firebase authentication user ID. Then for the full name, we store up to 256 characters, which is way, way more than we will ever need for a name. But 256 is like a pretty standard size for strings. Then we have this UUID, which is a unique ID. There are generators for UUIDs. We are going to use a library probably to generate this. It's just a universal unique identifier and it has a specific structure, which is something like this. We get this kind of numbers in hexadecimal strings. This warranties us that this is unique, so it will never repeat. Then we have a user ID, which is the same type of the foreign key, which is the user ID here, 50 characters length. Title, 256. Description, text, which is technically of any size. Then for foreign keys, we need to use the same as the foreign tables. In this case, UUID for workout and exercise. Repetitions, small integer. We don't need big numbers. Finally, well, on exercise, we have bar charts for URLs and titles, and then a description can be longer and a mosque can be an array of bar charts. I'm not sure if we need to specify here the size. We'll see this in the engine. This is just a model relational diagram. Here, if you see, there's this export RD here, and we can create, depending on the database engine that we are going to be using, we can create the table. So this is, for example, for Postgres, the primary key, because we are marking them as PK on exercises. We are not going to use this one because this is super limited, but this is the structure that we are going to be building to support the software. This phase is just design. The next phase will be actually creating the database and everything we need. Now we have the specification of the database. On the next video, we are going to actually build the tables on a real database. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you like this series and this content, please subscribe to my channel. I will be posting these every week or every two weeks so we can learn how to build a web app together. Thank you guys. Have a great day.